Está en vivo. Just would like to add a little bit more about what we spoke regarding regarding this emunem bitachon. Just before that, had a chayomid because of the new minyan that is coming up. Uh, we explained in the first minyan that there is a beracha that we do on the wine. Besides bore beriagefem, there is a beracha of hatov vehametiv. This beracha of hatov vehametiv, person does when he already did bore beriagefem on one type of wine, and now he's getting a second type of wine better than the first one. So you have to say the beracha of hatov vehametiv. Rabotai, the halacha speaks about this beracha, and it says, person gotta be extremely careful with this beracha because it have a lot of conditions, and if you don't have all the conditions coming up at the same time, the beracha it can be beracha levatala. Therefore, we have to know what are the conditions for the bichadat of amitim. So let's go quick. Condition number one. Gotta be, you say bore peri I give it all already in one type of wine. And what we just explained, the second type of wine that you're getting, it's a better quality of the first type of wine. Condition number one. What about if it's the same? So that her rights, if it's the same you don't do. What about if you, uh, you, you don't know? You don't know if it's better or not better. You think it's, uh, I mean, you don't know. The Allah writes that even when, uh, when there is a fake, in this case, you will be allowed to say a tov <coughs> So one condition, gotta be better. Second condition, Rabotai. What's the second condition? The Allah writes that the second condition gotta be that he had in your mind at the moment that you say Bore Peri Agefen at the first place, to have a second type of wine in in the middle of the Sauda. Many times happens that you're eating Hamotzi, and then a guy comes up to you from outside and brings you a bottle of wine. There is no Birkata Tov Amitiv on this wine. Doesn't matter how expensive will be the second bottle. If at the moment that you say Bore Peri Agefen, you didn't have in your mind to drink more wine <coughs> on the Seuda, there is no concept of a Tovah By the way, which Berakha you have to do? If a guy comes from outside and he brings a bottle of wine in the middle of the Seuda, you have to say, but I again again. Third condition, and this is very important. To be able to say the Berakha of a Tovah you must have left over from the first wine. If you don't have left over, if you just drink the whole bottle and it's, you know, done, there is no better help at all. Fourth condition. A person cannot say at all when he is alone. You're going to be drinking the wine with someone else. Someone asked me, what about my wife? Can I count my wife? Of course you can count your wife. Why is she? Yeah. Of course you can count your wife. Just... Gotta be that your wife will drink also the wine. You can be with a uh, hundred people, but the only one that is drinking is you. You will not say a tove amitiv on this wine. Okay? One more point on in a, in a tove amitiv is what about. Oh, gotta be that the type of wine is a different type of wine. I explain myself. There is uh, Merlot. You know Merlot? Merlot. Cabernet Sauvignon. There is a... Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Petit Syrah. Ah, Hazak Baruch. It is a professional. Professional. Good. So gotta be that the wine that he's taking is another type of wine. You did what I paid again on the Merlot. Now you're taking a Cabernet Sauvignon. That's good. That, then you can say a tov amitiv, but if it is both of them are law, you cannot say. Besides, besides, if the same type of wine, the same law that I said already, 
I'm getting a second bottle of Merlot, better quality and older than the first wine. Meaning, we know that the wine, right, more, more age you have, better quality of wine it is. Therefore, the Briut, therefore, in this case, if it is the same type of wine, but the second wine is older than the first one, you can still say, Atov Behan. But another drink wine in it. Huh? Ah, you got, you got a headache already. Yeah. 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 Go to champagne, that's it. Champagne, better. <laughs> okay, Rabotai, which better have you done the champagne? Oh, okay. okay. Rabotai, we were talking, I mean, we were talking about Emunai Mitachon. Let me just tell you this fantastic, fantastic story of a guy from here. And do me a favor, don't believe me. I'm just going to tell you why. It's a very crazy story, not normal story, but one thing I can tell you. The guy prayed with us every single day. And the guy, when he told me the story, he started to cry. He cried from the emotion, he cried from, from, from the, how amazed he was. That's how it goes. This guy, He's traveling, I believe it was in Argentina, and he's taking, and he's taking uh, uh, his car, planning with the whole entire family, his wife, his daughter, his son, planning to go from one city to another city. Okay, now we're talking about long trip, few hours of trip. And uh, back then, at that time, the situation in Argentina, especially with the gasoline, was a little bit uh, complicated. I don't know what happened exactly. A lot of gasoline stations that were uh, uh, of, ga uh, of gasoline. Okay, Mikitsur. The guy said, listen, I have the whole tank. Once I will get to the half of the tank, I was still looking around for a gas station. Right? Now, uh, like I told you, a few hours of drive. He's in the middle of the road, and he sees that already, uh, you know, he's getting to the half of the tank. He decided, that's it. That's the siman I have to start looking for. He says he sees one gas, one gas station, out of service. Continue on, second gas station, out of service. No gasoline, no gasoline. Continue on, nothing, there is no gas. And the gasoline starts to go down and down. The tank is getting, he said, I am in the middle of nowhere. No houses, no nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm in the middle of the road, in between two cities, I still have, I don't know how many miles to get to the city. And he said, and the worst, all of a sudden, there is the light of the, of the tank, warning. Of, the, of the warning, that the guy is about to, let's say, to lose all his guys. He said his wife was sleeping, but he had his daughter in the back. She was awake. And he started to pray. Sometimes we can, uh, you know, you can, we can blame people. Oh, you're not responsible. You, you remember what happened over here uh, two years ago with the with the hurricane? Okay, there was no gasoline, and we had to escape. Yeah, for me, it happened the same thing. And I had to take, to take the car, and hopefully that a Boreolam will help me to get to one of the gas stations that I will find. Okay. Baruch Hashem, we got to New York, it was a crazy uh, trip, <laughs> I don't recommend it, but uh, fine. Anyway, the guy is already seeing the light coming on, and he starts to pray. And he said, and he's, he's praying out loud, his daughter is hearing him, the daughter sees the, the, the light in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, the warning, and he starts to pray, if I'm gonna get stuck over here, what are I gonna do with my family? <laughs> it's not a joke. My kids are little. I'm in the middle of nowhere. God, please help me out. 
don't stop me over here. And he prays and he prays and he prays and he's telling me, you have to understand, I feel that I have nothing, I, I, I cannot do anything. Say, Akadosh Baruch Hu, everything is, is in your hands. I cannot do anything. Save me. But, but I cannot say the story the same way that the guy that told me the story said. But one thing I can tell you. The guy, tears in his eyes, is telling me, you're not going to believe it. I started to see the, uh, needles. the needle in the, in, uh, of the tank going up. Oh, wow. Going up, going up, and I tell my, my, my daughter in the back, do you see what I'm seeing? <laughs> do you see what I'm seeing? He says he went up until the half of the tank. Half of the tank. And like I just told you, the guy started to go all the way until we got to his destination. When he got to the first city and he saw, then he started to go down again. And he was able to fill fill gasoline to fill up. Not story again. You don't have to believe me. Okay. <laughs> okay, but one thing, one thing I can tell you. How did it happen? How did it happen? The same way how the Ramban writes throughout the big miracles, a person is able to see the small miracles. Remember that I told you. Throughout seeing all these amazing miracles, a person is able to understand that also when you and I breathe, every single second is a miracle. Why breathing you believe in this story that I just told you? Ah, you're doubting, you're too crazy. I gotta tell you, Babasani. You wanna hear a story of Babasani? Amazing. The Babasani. One day, he called up a taxi driver. Now, this uh, taxi station, the noon. The, the, when the Baba Salih call, call for a taxi, they gotta send, you know, one of their best drivers, religious and everything. He said that, that he's calling up a taxi driver, taxi guy to his house, and he said that he's, that the rabbi, the rabbi tells the taxi driver, I need to go from Be'er Sheba, Be'er Sheba is in the south, all the way up, start driving. Safona. Up north. So the driver said to the Baba Sali, Rabbi, no problem, just give me two minutes, I'm gonna fill up the, the tank, gasoline, and we're gonna be ready to go. The Baba Sali said, I didn't ask you to stop. Go drive. <laughs> now the driver knew the Baba Sali, the Baba Sali, maybe it's another. They started to drive, and he said, I am going down the gasoline. I have no gasoline. And I'm traveling from Be'er Sheva up north. To where? Say, so we got Tzfat. We got Meron. <coughs> Once we get to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi said, over here, stop me. I, I'm entering, I, I have to pray, and then we'll go back. Rabbi enters to Meron, pray, goes out, and he tells the driver, Right now, take me back. You don't stop for gasoline. Take me back. Guys, <laughs> 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 rabbi, no gas. You take me back. And they went all the way back from Medan to Be'er Sheva. Now, time, when the rabbi arrived to the house, the driver tells the rabbi, Rabbi, do me a favor. Give me beracha. At least to reach to the. Nearest gas <laughs> station. You're gonna leave, no more miracles, they're gonna get stuck over here. The rabbi upset. Looks at him a little bit upset and he said, Okay, if you have a bit of you will you will get to the gas station. So the driver looks at the rabbi and tells him, Rabbi, why are you upset? He says, Chabad, that you asked me this type of bit of Because if you weren't asking, you didn't have to, to fill up gasoline for all your life. Wow. Ah, this story we believe? A little bit more, no? Uh, by the side. <laughs> What's going on over here? Rabotai, mi she'amad l'ashem el be'idlak, yomad l'chomet she'idlak. Rabbi Yechan Ibn Abed Nusa, we know the famous story that happened with his daughter. The daughter is coming up to, to his father and tells him, Abba, I have no oil. Shabbat now is coming. We have no oil. They were very poor. And, and, and the father tells her, I don't understand the question. 
Big vinegar. A little bit of vinegar. No, but I don't try at home. It's not gonna work. You take vinegar, you try it, and it's not light. Vinegar, it's uh, like water. It's not, it's not light. And when they ask him, Rabbi, how come the miracle happened? And this nail, this this flame, stayed up the whole week. So Rabbi, how how could that be? And it's very simple. The same one that said to the oil to light, is going to say to the vinegar to light. Oil lighting, it's a miracle, not a miracle. So we see it as natural. But who said that this piece of oil can light a fire? The answer is what else? For Akadosh Baruch Hu to give miracles is the same thing that for us, you know, to, to, to eat a piece of car. Same idea. Because you have to believe. And a person who trusts in him, who believes on Akadosh Baruch Hu, that he's managing everything, is not scared about trusting on Borel Adam and miracles. We believe in miracles. That's why, Rabbi all the story of Yosef at Tzadik is around Emuna. Is around Emuna. Yosef at Tzadik were read that he was thrown to this to this jail, right? For how long he was, he was in the jail? 12 years. Ah, 12 years, right? At the end of the tent, he's saying to the minister that was with him in the, in the, in the jail, do me a favor, you go, you're gonna be released. Do me a favor, but remind but all that I'm here. <coughs> and he said two words. And said the Midrash, because he said two words, he was punished by two extra years. We're asking ourselves, come on, that's a punishment? Why is that a punishment? Are we not obligated to do Ishtadlut? Are we not obligated to give and to do our effort? What's going on over here? Why is Sefer Zedek was punished? Rabotai Chobat al writes, more a person believes, less a person needs to do Ishtadlut. Ishtadlut, Chobat Ishtadlut is an obligation. We have to do it. But more you level in Emunah and on um, Bidachon and Akadosh Baruch Hu is higher, less need of Ishtadlut the person needs. I forgot about uh, the name of this rabbi that he said that one time he was very poor. He was very poor. And, uh, and uh, you know, his wife got sees that uh, the kids, there's nothing to eat in the house. So she turns up to, to, to her husband and she tells her, listen, we have nothing to eat. So, nothing to eat, it's my obligation. When I got married to you, I took an, uh, like a man, he's taking an obligation no. to feed up his family, his wife and the kids. If you need food, no problem. He, t he says he took, he took his hat, his jacket, and he lives out of the house. He just go out from the house, few steps, he give four steps, and he finds something on the floor. He said the coin that he found on the floor was an enough amount to feed up his family for one month. Mm -hmm. The money that he found. He said that at the second that he is picking up the money, there is one of the neighbors that was watching the rabbi looking from the from the window <clears throat> and this neighbor goes out from the house and he says rabbi i gotta tell you something i saw this money on the floor i was in the house i couldn't leave the house i saw people walking next to the money looking at the floor and no one pick it up how come how come those people saw it and they didn't pick it up and you, you saw it and, and you got it? So I don't understand the question. What do you think? I can feed my family? Which work? I'm learning Torah. But I did, I'm doing my part for the Olam. I'm doing my Ishtadlut. When a person gives his part and he trusts on the rest, but the Olam is giving the rest. It's hard for my Kadosh Baruch Hu. How did Manar write Amar Rabbi Binyamin? Famous in the Rav Hazal. Everything 
Did you see? Originally, we're blind people. Didn't it happen to you? You're looking for the keys of the car. Where are the keys? You're running crazy. You're late. You gotta find the keys. All of a sudden, your wife comes and says, Hello, right over here. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Right Happened? Always. Say, Rabbi Bin Amin, I call the Katsunis. Glasses. Yeah, uh, I forget. Yeah, I, yeah. I had a, this night, I slept only three hours, maybe. Him and one of my sons are sick. And we had to put in the. Uh, it's like a type of uh, spray like that. So in the middle of the night, I put it. And I forgot where I leave it. After a few hours, he woke up again and was running crazy to find where did I put it. But I was behind my nose. Behind my nose. I called the Hatzket to me. Until I could just put the side to open your eyes. But this type of mentality, of way of thought, Understanding that every single second that you move something, it's not you. is the help of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's helping us to have the life, in the, to see the life in another perspective. And how Hamim explains, you know, you take, you, you take a, a, I spoke about it, you take a stick and you hit the, the dog, the dog is going to jump on the stick. When a person lives with emunah, he you understands know, that all what happened to his life is not the stick. It's not this guy and it's not this man that is cursing me or making me troubles. It's like those by who managing those people, they are, they are puppets. Then your life is going to be much happier. You're going to be able to feel the life in a, in a much uh, a calm way and in a much happier way. We got the message? Thank you.